Hello viewers, in today's session we are going to discuss an important problem from Fourier transforms, right? So here uh, in this class uh, we are going to find out the Fourier transform of this function uh, that is e raised to a negative of mod of x, right? So let us start. So let us first define the Fourier transform of a function. Suppose we have a function say f of x, uh, then the Fourier transform of uh, the function f of x is capital F of f of x, uh, which is given by this integral that is minus infinity to infinity. Then we have here uh, this function f of x and e raised to minus i s x uh, dx, right? So this is the definition of uh, the Fourier transform of uh, a function f of x where uh, the notations has uh, the usual uh, meaning. So here uh, we have to find the Fourier transform of e raised to minus mod of x. So let us take the function uh, f of x as e raised to negative of mod x, right? So the Fourier transform of uh, this function e raised to minus mod of x uh, is given by the integral minus infinity to infinity. Uh, we have here e raised to minus mod of x and then we have e raised to minus i s x uh, dx, right? So now viewers, here we have uh, the mod function, right? And the limits uh, goes from minus infinity to infinity. So here we have minus infinity, here we have plus infinity, and uh, here we have x is equal to zero, right? Now to evaluate this integral, uh, we have to make use of the definition of uh, mod function. So the mod of x is defined like this, uh, mod of x is equal to positive x whenever x is greater than or equal to 0 and mod of x is negative x whenever x is less than 0, right? So when we go from minus infinity to uh, 0, then all the values of x are uh, less than 0. Right. So um, what we will do, we'll split this integral uh, as a sum of two integrals that is minus infinity to zero and then we have zero to infinity. Right. So when x is less than zero, then uh, we have to go from minus infinity to zero. So in that case, uh, mod of x is equal to negative of x. Right. So here we have e raised to negative and mod of x is negative x and we have e raised to minus i s x uh, dx, right? Okay, now when we go from uh, 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, including x is equal to 0, then x is always greater than 0, right? And equal to 0. So when x is greater than or equal to 0, mod of x is uh, given by positive x, right? So when we go from 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, then we have e raised to a negative of, here we have positive x and here we have negative i s x and here we have dx, right? So the mod function allows us uh, to split this integral as a sum of two integrals uh, one is from a negative infinity to zero and the second one is from zero to infinity right so when x is less than zero then mod of x is equal to negative x and when uh, x is greater than or equal to zero then mod of x is equal to uh, positive x right so now uh, let us uh, simplify the integrands and then uh, we can easily uh, uh, solve these two integrals. So now we can write uh, minus infinity to zero. Here we have e raised to uh, minus minus plus. So we have e raised to x, e raised to 
minus sx uh, dx and then we have 0 to infinity and then we have e raised to uh, minus times plus here we have negative x e raised to minus isx and dx right so let us write these two integrals as minus infinity to 0 and here uh, the bases are same so we can add the uh, exponents so we have e raised to x plus uh, minus isx dx and then we have 0 to infinity e raised to negative x and then we have negative isx and here we have dx. So now we can uh, write negative infinity to 0. Here we have e raised to x taking x common. We have 1 minus is and here we have dx and then we have 0 to infinity and e raised to negative x and we have 1 plus is and here we have dx. So now let us solve these two integrals. Let us call this integral as i1, this integral as i2, right? So i1 is from minus infinity to 0, e raised to x, 1 minus i s and here we have dx. So let us solve this integral by method of substitution. So now let us uh, take u is equal to uh, x times uh, 1 minus i s, right? So now uh, du over dx is equal to 1 minus i s because the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, right? So now uh, dx can be written as du uh, divided by 1 minus i s. Now let us change the limits. So when uh, see here x varies from uh, negative infinity to 0. So when x tends to negative infinity, then u also tends to a negative infinity uh, uh, by this relation, right? Because u and x are connected by this relation, u is equal to x times 1 minus uh, uh, iota times s. Right? So when x tends to minus infinity, then u also tends to minus infinity. And when x is uh, 0, then obviously u is also equal to 0. Right? So now this integral i1 uh, is equal to, uh, we have minus infinity to 0, e raised to uh, u, and here we have for dx, uh, we can write uh, du over 1 minus is, right? So we can take 1 over 1 minus is outside the integral. So we have minus infinity to 0, e raised to u, du, right? So we have 1 minus uh, 1 over 1 minus is and the integral of e raised to u with respect to u is e raised to u. And the limits of integration are from minus infinity to uh, 0. So now substituting the limits, we have 1 over 1 minus i s. And here we have e raised to 0. And then we have minus e raised to minus infinity. Right? Now uh, here e raised to 0 is equal to 1. And e raised to uh, minus infinity can be written as 1 over e raised to infinity and e raised to infinity is a large number that is infinity and 1 over infinity uh, it tends to uh, 0 right so we have uh, here a 1 over 1 minus i s and e raised to 1 is 1 and e raised to minus infinity is 0 so this is 1 over 1 minus i s, right? So where's the value of this integral i1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus i times s. 
so now let us take the second integral i2 so we have 0 to infinity e raised to minus x 1 plus iota times s dx so i uh, will also solve this integral by method of substitution uh, so let us uh, introduce a variable say v is equal to uh, here we can take x times 1 plus i s right so v is equal to x times 1 plus uh, i s so dv over dx is equal to uh, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1 so we have 1 plus i s right so dx can be written as uh, dv divided by 1 plus i s right now see x varies from 0 to infinity so when x tends to a 0 uh, that is x is equal to 0 then the value of v also tends to 0 right and when x uh, tends to infinity uh, that is the upper limit so here a uh, v also tends to infinity right so now i2 can be written as uh, 0 to infinity here we have v is equal to 0 to v is equal to uh, infinity we have e raised to minus v x times 1 plus i s is uh, v and dx is uh, dv divided by a 1 plus i s right now uh, 1 over uh, 1 plus i s can be taken outside the integral we have 0 to infinity e raised to minus v and dv so now the integral of e raised to uh, minus uh, v is a minus e raised to minus v right and the limits are from 0 to infinity so here we have 1 over 1 plus i s and uh, substituting the limits we have minus uh, e raised to minus infinity first we'll take infinity here then we have 0 so here we have now plus e raised to 0 right and uh, we have just discussed that e raised to minus infinity it tends to 0 and e raised to 0 is equal to 1 right so we have here a 1 over 1 plus i s and uh, this is 0 e raised to minus infinity so we have minus 0 which is simply 0 and here we have e raised to 0 as 1 so we have 1 over 1 plus i s right so where's the value of i2 is equal to 1 over 1 plus i times s so now the Fourier transform of the function e raised to a minus a mod of x is given by the sum of these two integrals that is i1 plus i2 right so i1 is 1 over 1 minus i s and i2 is 1 over 1 plus i s right so now simplifying this expression by taking the LCM here 1 minus is 1 plus is and in the numerator we have 1 plus is plus 1 minus is right so these two terms get cancelled here we have 1 plus 1 2 and here we have a minus b a plus b so we have a square minus b square right and a is our 1 b is uh, i s so we have 1 square minus i square s square and i square is equal to uh, minus 1 so we have 2 over 1 square is 1 i square is minus 1 so this is plus s square right so the Fourier transform of e raised to uh, minus mod of x is given by uh, 2 over 1 plus s square so viewers so we can uh, claim that uh, the Fourier transform of e raised to minus mod x is equal to uh, 2 divided by 1 plus s square 
and this is how uh, we can find out the Fourier transform of e raised to minus uh, absolute value of x.